Life Management Science Labs would like to acknowledge that we live and produce this podcast on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people. We'd also like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands of our listeners and our international colleagues. We'd like to thank and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Hi everyone and welcome to On The House, the Household Management Science Insights podcast produced by LMSL, the Life Management Science Labs. We are champions of life management science, providing structured insights informed by science and inspired by practice on key aspects of conscious living. Each week we bring you scientific and practical insights on each element with the expert knowledge of professionals in the field. I'm your host, Gabriella Yastra, coming to you from NAM, Melbourne, Australia. Let's begin. Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode. Today we're going to be talking about budget-friendly eco-cleaning for a greener, cleaner home. And we're talking to Bagishri Bansali, who is the founder of The Disposal Company. Hi, welcome to the show. Hi Gabriela, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining me. Do you mind introducing yourself in a bit more detail so we know who you are? Absolutely. Hi everyone, I am Bhagishri Bansali and I'm the founder of The Disposal Company. Uh, we are a branch that, brand that launched in India and currently we are working around India, Singapore, the UK and hopefully around the world this year. So we work on democratizing sustainability for brands and organizations. So we pioneer in plastic neutrality and we've also started working on carbon neutrality recently. Great. Thank you so much. Um, and we'd like to do a little section called Have You Met Bibi, where we get to know you through some of your favorite things. First thing I'd like to know is what is your favorite book? My favorite book um, actually is The Alchemist. I think I read it as a child and it it just uh, stayed with me. And I think it's just a book that I keep going back to. Aha. Uh-huh. And why is that? I think just um, the philosophy resonated with me really well. Um, it, the book uh, by Paulo Coelho talks a lot about getting to know yourself um she always uh, one staying uh, connected with the child within yourself and also you know just always believing in your gut um also it talks about um, a young fellow being just a dreamer and dreaming beyond you know just what the world tells you to be your limits and i think that really resonates with how i how i live my life or how i am as a Great. And I love the idea of you reading it as a kid and I guess maybe not losing your inner child and like continuing it on. Yeah, exactly. And although it, it just it just makes your life so much more happier and easier if you stay in touch with that inner child of yours. Ah, great. Thank you for sharing. And have you watched any movies recently that you've really enjoyed? Oh, absolutely. I'm, I'm a major movie buff uh, and I particularly love Bollywood movies. Um, I think one of the recent movies that I've loved is 12th Fail. Um, it talks about um, a, a, a young fellow again from a small village in India who goes on and just relentlessly pursues his dream of becoming um, an administrator uh, in, in the Indian, uh, in Indian government. Uh, And he ends up doing that uh, despite the struggles and hardships that life throws at him. I think it was absolutely cathartic uh, to hear his story. Great. I find it quite interesting that this person's dream is to be, is to work into the government. Yeah. uh, I I think I also like the movie because I somehow relate with it uh, Mm -hmm. because I worked with the government and that was my dream uh, growing up as a child. Um, so yeah, it's very interesting. Uh, and I think you should watch the movie. Okay. Thank you. I'll, um, I'll see if I can find it on a streaming service near me. Yeah. Thank you. And do you listen to any podcasts? Oh, I love podcasts. I think that's my choice of, uh, entertainment. Absolutely. Um, and yeah, like there are lots of podcasts that I, I constantly on my, uh, I mean, on my list and I'm hearing them every day. Mm-hmm. Any favorites? Oh, definitely. Um, so uh, I think there is uh, one by Emma Shambhali, uh, and you know, uh, which is like, which is just super cool, and it, it's so unserious. Um, so yeah, just look up Emma Shambhali and listen to her podcast, uh, and that's wonderful. Uh, there's another one by Penn Badgley, uh, where you know uh, he talks to people about uh, how you were as a teenager, uh, and I think that that's really cool as well. 
<laughs> I don't know if I want to, I mean, I know what I was like as a teenager and I was a little bit painful. So I guess maybe people reflecting back on that. Yeah, I think, you know, like, so, so they talk, talk to a lot of, like, you know, stars uh, who Ben Badgley has worked with. And, you know, he's been part of the shows like Gossip Girl and You. Um, so a lot of stars from there are also, like, just a lot of Hollywood stars. And the interesting thing about this podcast is that you get to know from their experiences that everybody had a tough, like, teenage. <laughs> everybody who had a difficult teenage. It's so relatable and good to hear that. And very reassuring as well. Actually, that's great because, yeah, a lot of these, you know, very famous people, you think they must have the best childhood. And, you know, you just learn that they're just like us and we can actually do what they do if, you know, if we maybe have a lucky break and um, or if we don't want to be like them, that's also fine. Yeah. And, and a lot of people are still, like, you know, just coming to age or coming to terms. Uh, and, and oh, my God, everybody has the PTSD. So that's extremely relatable and, you know, just reliving the childhood traumas, the bullies and, you know, the the crushes that we had and when we could not go up to them. It's just same for everybody around the world. Mm, Yeah, great. Um, And do you have any role models? Oh, I do. Um, And uh, my role models, um, they they might not be like your very mainstream role models, but um, I love how Ryan Reynolds uh, actually like, you know, uh, handles his business. Um, And I think um, Ryan Reynolds and Shah Rukh Khan uh, are my absolute role models because um, on the surface, like, you know, uh, most people look at them as handsome men that they are and also like you know the brilliant movie stars they are but there's so much more like they're such brilliant businessmen their business acumen uh, and for them to have a great sense of humor on top of it um so so that really inspires me and also uh i i think like i'm i'm also really inspired by blake lively um because for me uh the being like a role model also needs to be this uh this human you know, who I can be, like, who I can look up to. Um, so, so, you know, like, I mean, those are my role models. And apart from that, uh, my mother-in-law is, is, is like, a, is like the real life role model who I, I wish, like, you know, I can even be 10% off, I think, I, I'll be such for <laughs> Yeah, I love how, you know, you've got quite a wide range there. You've got, you know, some, some movie stars and you've got, you know, someone who's very close to home, a really great range, um, you know, looking to the stars and also looking to home. Thank you. Thank you. And um, have you completed any courses that have, have inspired you? Oh, um, yes. I think um, I, I think like just um, always, like I, I'm always trying to upscale myself uh, very recently. Uh, I mean, it's, it, uh, it's a course that actually comes in handy uh, in the stream of work that I am, uh, which is like just dealing, uh, deep, uh, taking a deep dive in carbon, uh, like, you know, understanding the carbon footprinting. So uh, I think I am just like, you know, now uh, like doing more and more courses on understanding how the carbon footprinting works um, across different organizations and especially scope three, um, because I believe um, it, it's very important for us to understand this, given the time that we are living in today, how important like, you know, climate change and climate action um, and to have a fair bit of understanding around these things is. Um, so, uh, I mean, while it was a very technical course, it did, uh, I think, help me understand that uh, how mindful we need to be uh, when we are especially like, you know, working as business owners. So, so yeah. Yeah, thank you. And that really ties into what we're going to be talking today. And hopefully you're going to be able to um, educate us on some of the things you learned, maybe without so much of the technical things you learned. Uh, yeah, thank you. So before we get started on our topic, I like to, you know, do a few definitions. And the first thing I'd like you to define is household management. Sure. So see, in very simple terms, um, household management actually comes down to as an individual, you know, uh, when you are getting any little thing, uh, when you're, you're making it part of your surrounding at your home, which is, you know, as personal as it gets, you what are the factors that you look into? You know, what are the things uh, you, everybody, even subconsciously or consciously, has a list of factors that ends up becoming very critical when they are maybe even buying a broom or, you know, uh, even buy a statue for their home or buying, you know, uh, every little thing that comes in handy, uh, you know, in your day-to-day household. household. So 
the factors that come into play consciously or subconsciously um i think that's what household management boils down to um and given again the times that we are in it's very crucial that we are mindful of them and that we are very aware of how we are making these choices um so so yeah like i mean for me household management is just you know how i look at uh, my home every day how i look at my surroundings every day and how i make each of those choices which are um which are good for me and my loved ones in the long run mhm so you mentioned you know how factors can come into this do you mind explaining that a bit more maybe giving some examples absolutely so okay it starts with you know um let's say that you know uh, like in your home there's a there's always a bite in every house that you know you enter there's always a bite bite um on the surface it it i it can either look like you know somebody has a very chic vibe where you know everything is selected in a certain way the placements of things in your home are in a certain way or someone could have a boho you know vibe in their house um and then uh, the second layer of you know these choices enter once you go beyond this you know just the surface of what you look in the first two three minutes and when you enter someone's home that's when you start realizing if you stay at somebody else's house for a day let's say you start realizing that you know the products that they use around there okay when you, even when you're cleaning your some if someone's cleaning their home uh and any sort of products that they use that leaves behind a fragrance um uh, but what you may, might not know is that they have looked at a packaging and there is a certain reason why they have a particular brand that they using in their house right um then also you start realizing how clean or unfortunately unclean you know this person's uh, management or you know just day to day working is um because some people are extremely conscious to the point of having like you know an ocd um or you know somebody might be extremely carefree or have a lifestyle which does not give them enough time to actually put time into managing their home and that too you know all of these factors end up creating an environment uh which you know you are going to be uh, the other person is going to be in for a long long time and that cannot just affect um you know the uh, the surroundings but it also has a very real effect on the mood on you know your health conditions on you know uh just the mindset that you're in uh it 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 actually is a reflection of you as a person so mm-hmm. so you know a lot of factors are in there uh, which you know form the layer of household management Okay, thank you. And you've really neatly uh tied this into my next question. You've mentioned that cleaning products um and I guess, you know, maybe the packaging or the scent or branding contribute to why we bring them in- into our home and make them part of our home. So, what is you know, what is eco-friendly cleaning and, you know, I guess why should we pick that over maybe something that smells nicer? Okay. um so two reasons i'm going to divide this answer into two parts um so one reason you know why we today need to pick an eco friendly uh, you know sort of a product the simple reason is the health effect that is it's going to have on you so it's a very very personal uh, reason um i'll draw from my own life um i think um i i was not extremely conscious uh, about the uh, choices especially um when it came to the household cleaning that that's not really even mundane to think about right but it all changed for me because um when um, my mother was diagnosed uh, with cancer a few years ago so my mother is a cancer survivor um but during her treatment uh, you know that's when it one it became extremely personal and second we became extremely conscious as a family of what we are consuming to you know what anything that is topical right and your household products end up becoming topical um, at some point you're walking on the floor you know you're you're in in the four walls of your room so um so you know what uh, we, when we spoke to the doctors uh, and the more you know me my younger brother my father when we started researching more and more we became paranoid to the point uh, that you know every ingredient we needed to know that is it safe or not for her. um and um i hope that you know for most people they don't have to go through uh, an experience uh, like this but it's but you know such situations just if one has like a such a condition in their life when one of their loved ones is going through something like this it really bowls uh, like you know uh, it, it just bo- like just just goes through your mind it just starts coming it becomes very natural but here's the thing 
so you need to be very mindful of you know what ingredients go into it and that's why it's a very real health condition and i think it was a good um, change in our lifestyle because it has continued since my mother is well uh, and up now uh, thankfully but you know now this has become a part of our lifestyle that every time we pick up a product we see the ingredient list the second is where you know the whole environment factor comes in right uh, see today it's actually good that you know there are even d2c brands out there and uh, across the world you know there are more and more companies uh, be it the conglomerates or be it the new age brands they're producing products with less uh, you know of these chemicals in them um, and you know these are more and more natural factors um so i will i will also draw an incident uh, from one of my favorite shows which is friends uh, where you know monica uh, some a, a new cleaning lady comes in and she says to monica that hey your uh, home cleaner is amazing what's in there and she says i made it myself um uh, and you know it's it's as simple as that like you know uh, if you make it something uh, you know yourself you know what's really in there but i'm not asking people here to make it themselves all i'm asking is just just read the labels and as less chem- chemicals in there the better for the environment uh, the better it is for you uh, and the better it is for the ecosystem um mm-hmm. again like you know everything uh, because if let's say you're adding more and more chemicals to it uh, one even during the manufacturing the carbon footprint of this product increases uh, right uh, and then it does not degrade easily you know where does so i mean when balance this product is there and you know it's out there who does it affect it's going to affect you and me it's going to affect the you know all the people and if you have a baby in your home again that's one of the things that makes you realize that you know this is not that this is not good for their health so so yeah just like these two factors of why you should actually be mindful of the products that you use one is for your own personal health and that's like that's the most important bit and second of course is also the environment that you're in okay thank you and you bring up a lot of points that i want to dive into um So I guess my first question there is so if you are so you know you've bought these oh sorry so you're starting from scratch you know you're starting to look at the labels and you mentioned that there are a lot of different chemicals that you had to learn do you have like a crash course of you know what we could be looking out for when we're looking at products because um you know doing some of my own research i did notice that there are like lots of different products in different countries with different names so what might be relevant um where you are might not be re- you know might not be relevant where i am so what are the chemicals that we're looking out for that maybe we can say this is good or this is bad okay um so first of all um see there are very different laws across the world uh, you know when it comes to the kind of chemicals that you can add also the kind of quantities that you can add um okay but um while i don't think that there is a particular list uh, at this point of chemicals that i can tell you to avoid um because um just very frankly the the regulations in india versus the regulations you know in australia versus the regulations in uh, us or eu are extremely different um but i would still say that um go majorly for the products in eu uh, like you know if you can if you have access to them because they have the stringent uh, the most stringent laws so you know it it's just it's just better um so europe always you know has been at the forefront um uh, of climate change and they're very particular about it so if you have access just try and see if you can get brands uh, you know from the eu region uh the second thing that you know i can maybe uh, give you a tip is that check the first three products uh, uh, in the first three ingredient list okay um so if the first three ingredient list um, you know so okay so in most of the countries when you mention an ingredient list the general law is that whatever is present in the most amount of quantity should be listed first and that's the you know order that you have to flow in so in the first three products and you just google them and if they are safe you know topically for your body then you're good to go but if you you know find uh, the first three products like any one of the first three ingredients listed and that's something that you know is a little bit harmful i would recommend that that product is a no Um uh, mm-hmm. that's also true you know when you buy any fmcg product so uh, another like for example um, one of the things that you know we saw here in india was that a lot of um, the manufactured or prepackaged products have been, you know uh, something like particularly like even food and beverages had palm olive in them um, in very high quantities while palm olive is actually uh, banned or you know uh, very controlled in us and eu again so um, but i mean the simple like i mean rule that we go by now is that you know if 
palm olive or like you know the the different names for palm olive are one of the first three ingredients like just skip the product altogether so this is just an example and you can go by the sim- similar law uh, you know when you're also buying your cleaning product the another thing that you know um, you can look up which is not you know um, very um, i would say overwhelming uh, for anybody just starting out is look for the certifications so again across the world um, brands are now required to mention certain certifications on their product okay uh, and it's also helpful uh, for us as customers to avoid greenwashing so you know for example i'm sure that all of us have seen peta certified um, you know now getting like peta certified certification on a lot of fmcg products including the household so that means that you know these are animal cruelty free products um, so there are organizations that are working around the world to help us out. So um, another organization that has been working in sustainability is Vera or Gold Certified or you know B Certified. So these are global organizations that work again as for global standards that uh, give certifications to brands who passed a rigorous uh, you know audit um, on just being more ethical or more sustainable as brands. So opt for you know such brands. Um, so here in India and uh, the UK and Singapore, the disposal company provides a seal of sustainability, which is a trademark seal for only plastic neutral brands. Um, you know where, uh, which means that these brands are mindful of the plastic footprint they put out in the environment. So while it may not affect you uh, uh, very directly, but then it means that this brand, you know, is conscious about how much plastic they're putting out in the environment and what happens to this plastic. so chances are that such a brand is conscious you know at the core of it their principles are you know more uh, maybe a little more ethical than others so so always look for certifications uh, yes you might have to do a bit of research on you know what are the right certifications in the region you are at um, and lastly um, just look for the packaging so a simple rule would be a conscious brand today would try and make their packaging in such a way that it can either degrade easily or is very easy to recycle if a brand has multiple different types of plastics in them they have different numbers written avoid it and if a brand is making like you know uh, m- making an effort to actually provide a degradable packaging chances are that they're mindful of what they're putting in the product itself as well i hope that's okay. easy Thank you, thank you. So I have a specific question. So recently we moved house and we finally got a dishwasher, which is very exciting for me um, because we no longer have to wash our hands, uh, wash our hands, wash our dishes by hand. Um, but then I was faced with the choice of, you know, which dishwashing tablet to buy. And I heard that the the ones um, that don't come in wrapped in plastic have the plastic. I'm not sure if this is true, but has microplastics as the outside, which is what keeps them, I guess. together and then you put in the dishwasher and it actually contributes more to plastic packaging. My first question, yeah, so that's my first question is when you're looking at that, you know, what is better, the plastic wrap or the the microplastics? Absolutely the plastic wrap. Uh we don't okay. don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Um okay, so here's the thing. See, one microplastic today is uh is our reality. uh unfortunately microplastics is in our dna already so you know um and yeah like uh, in fact the newborn babies are born with microplastics today um wow. and this and this has like you know th- it it is a very unfortunate reality that today we are living here uh, in and these uh, microplastics cause all sorts of problems including uh, cancer as well again uh, i found out about it you know when my mother was um, going through the uh, whole process of uh, or her treatment um now having said that it's a very very important that uh, you know you are careful about uh, buying a product um by yes you're right a lot of tablets you know that the ones that you the kind the similar to what you mentioned they do you know have the microplastics in them but um there are all the other products available in the market as well like for example like there are lots of soaps um, you know uh, there are companies that are making soaps also which come without plastic packaging um and so these companies also make tablet for uh, your dishwasher so i'm sure uh, you know uh, probably like I'll, i'll just find a good brand for you which is available you know in your region and i will send you uh, options but having said that to um, answer your particular query look um, avoid try and avoid microplastics as much as possible um, and see any product that you buy even if it comes in a plastic wrapper 
my suggestion would be that as soon as uh, you get it, you know, uh, just remove the plastic packaging. See, um, even if uh, a product like, you know, comes in a plastic packaging um, and it does not like has microplastics in it. But if any product, any FMCG product stays in any sort of plastic packaging for a long period of time, microplastics will seep in. Um, ah. if for households, uh, if let's say you are reheating some food, um, you know, which we all of us youngsters, you know, I, the young generation has come to uh, do, uh, please make sure that you do not heat the product in microwave in a plastic container. Uh, please heat it in a glass or, a, you know, other, any other material that's microwave friendly, but do not heat in, uh, heat it in, um, avoid buying packaged uh, drinking water as well, because that has uh, microplastics in it. Um, try that you do not store water in uh, your fridge in or in your refrigerator in plastic bottles. Avoid that uh, as much as possible. See, because 99% of, uh, of products out there have microplastics in them. Mm -hmm. uh, and these, uh, you know, get into our body and, you know, uh, they uh, produce, uh, they, they are a major source of, uh, like, you know, uh, all chemicals uh, that are very harmful uh, for you. So, see, at this point, I would recommend that maybe go for the plastic packaging one or all together, do a little more research and find a better product. Yeah, because um, we were we just moved in um, and we desperately needed to wash all our dishes. We just bought one. And this comes to the second part of my question. So I spent, you know, about five minutes looking at all the different products and everything came in plastic boxes. And I was trying to avoid that. Um, and so I picked one with a cardboard box and I thought, Oh, I'm going to be so good. And I opened it and every tablet was wrapped in plastic. So it, it felt a bit like, um, you know, greenwashing. I don't know if that's correct, but it, you know, I felt a bit tricked because I tried to buy the, the more, the one that I can recycle. And I've had this before as well, where I've bought a product um, in a cardboard box thinking I was trying to be better for the environment. I open up the box and guess what? It's in a plastic bag. <laughs> So, you know, how do I avoid this or, you know, is there, is it unavoidable? You know, do you have any tips in this area? Absolutely. Um, and yes, you're right. This is absolutely greenwashing, uh, you know. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm so sorry to hear about uh, this experience. And, and of course, this is a reality, you know, for most of us today uh, and around the world again. So, um, see, yes, to a major point today, uh, it's unavoidable. Because uh, we do not yet have a scalable solution or a scalable alternative to plastics today, um, you know, and it is up to the the conglomerates and you know the the big companies, uh, the big pharma or the big FMCG and all of these companies to put in more uh, you know resources into finding alternatives for packaging. Only then it can seep down to you know the small brands even that you buy from. So uh, so yes, um, having said that, like it it is difficult. But it's not impossible. I'll give you a simple solution if you're actually trying. Try and find a homegrown brand. Okay. Something that is uh, more uh, like, you know, that, that is something regional uh, and to your particular geography. Uh, because any product that you pick up, you know, even if, you know, you're trying to buy, let's say, like, you know, your uh, tablet for your, uh, for your dishwasher. I am sure there's somebody, uh, you know, in your own region, in your, like, you know, in your if not like at least like you know in your own city um a small brand that is just starting up who can actually provide you these things uh without the packaging right uh these homegrown brands and nowadays i think the best part um they you know that happened during the last four years is a rise in the number of homegrown brands across the world so the first thing is try this uh the second thing is um if there is a service which can provide you um a refilling sort of a service um, so, you know, those are also growing around the world. Um, so go for a refilling service where you can actually get this product in your own container. So in that case, one, you avoid any like, you know, uh, additional plastic or unnecessary packaging. Uh, and also like, you know, you can actually save new packaging from being produced. As more and more brands see that more consumers are adopting to these lifestyles, they will also make an effort to, you know, reduce the kind of plastic packaging or harmful packaging that is going out there. Um, also, another thing that you know you can do is that if you stay, if your favorite brand is still not offering these services, use the power of social media for growth. 
you know tweet to them write to them or you know uh, i mean we are always on social media talking about you know things and you know memes and everything one of the things that we could actually use is actually telling our brown our favorite brown what we really want that has worked really well in india uh, we have seen um so when you know we started working with some of the brands in india on plastic and carbon neutrality um a lot of people reach out to us saying how can our favorite brand do this and you know since then like people have actually reached out to their brands and you know, it it's become really easy for us to convince the brand because it comes from you the customer so, mm-hmm. so that's the final thing that you can do uh, but definitely like you know go for your regional brand i would say and that's the best way Okay, I'll have to have a look around for them. Um but you know, I've I've grown to really love some of my, you know, uh global brands that I know work. Uh for example, I tried to use a dishwashing, yeah, not dishwashing liquid. Um the liquid with which you detergent. Um you know, the one you wash your dishes with by hand. Um there were two brands. One of them said it was eco-friendly, the other one didn't. And I tried to use the eco-friendly one and I can tell you it was definitely not as good. So how do you get out of that situation? You know, I stopped buying the eco-friendly brand just because I found that I was having to do the dishes twice to get everything clean. Yeah. So uh, honestly like one Gabriela you're very right in saying that see like while like you know sustainability is paramount but the functionality always comes first, right? Like mm. a any brand that you know is like going out there and talking about like you know their eco-friendly practices they need to also know that one it has to make business sense and second it it needs to be like a functional good product um so um and see um it's great that you know you are putting in this effort uh, in buying every product you are trying like you know to minimize the plastic footprint that you're putting out there but unfortunately uh, one it's not always possible uh, you know like i said because right now we're not at a point where uh like all brands have started have stopped using plastic altogether they're still using plastic right and as as like you know as long as brands keep using plastic in their packaging we as customers can only like limit our use to some extent so a lot of responsibilities also lies with the brand um and yeah you can't be overwhelmed with the burden of you know being eco friendly without this being facilitated to you so mm-hmm. um so i would say that you know um, like Yeah, I mean it's great that you have this thought in your mind. You should always have that. But don't uh beat yourself down and don't like you know be overwhelmed or you know you don't always have to feel guilty about it because there's so much that you can do. Um mm-hmm. and uh, like I said, you know, uh I think the the best in this case, like the best case scenario in this case would be you keep using the brand that you love, your global brand, but you avail uh the refilling services because a lot of like you know these big brands now have uh they are putting in refilling stations around the world uh in fact like you know nowadays uh like we've seen something very cool in india where uh you have uh buses which come to your community um and you know you can just uh like book a refilling service and they'll bring your favorite brands uh and you know they'll just refill it uh refill it in your in your existing containers or your household containers um this is also this kind of service is also available in the uk i've seen it uh, across the stores even you know uh, for your um, makeups and your skin care um uh, and also you know for house household cleaning products so um, i think i'm 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 pretty sure that you know um like this kind of services would that uh, you know in your local region as well and if not just again like i mean tell your brands that you need them okay thank you Um yeah and that makes me feel a lot better because you know I did stop using the eco-friendly brand cuz I was like oh, I just can't be bothered. Um but yeah that's a great idea. I'll see if there is a refilling service. Um and that also brings me around to my next question. Um so you know maybe once I finished up with a product um and maybe there isn't the opportunity to res- um to refill it um because it doesn't exist in my area. How can I dispose of my products? in a more eco-friendly manner. I mean, I find plastic recycling very confusing. Um, do you mind, you know, giving us some ad- advice in this area? Oh, absolutely. I think uh I think I I am glad that you asked this question because this this has been my area of work, uh, you know, for uh the last 8 years now. So, okay. So, first of all, um again, uh this depends on, you know, where you are based at uh because uh, different countries and different regions around the world have different segregation system so the first point comes you know uh, when you're segregating the waste okay 
So um, I think um, in most cases now, one, there is a very simple segregation system where like you just don't mix the food waste or, you know, uh, the, the de like degradable waste with non-degradable waste. Okay, that's the most simple thing for anybody living anywhere in the world to do. Just don't mix, you know, your your degradable or your food waste with your plastic packaging. Okay, um, I'm going to Can talk I interrupt quickly there? Um, so what happens if you've, you know, you've got in takeaway food and you've got food in plastic packaging um, that you've eaten? Try not to do that for the microplastics, but it's already happened. Um, do you have to, is it better to wash the packaging and throw it out or just throw it straight in the bin? 100% it's better to wash it and throw it out. Okay. And, okay. you know, let's say even if they're leftovers, please throw the food, like, you know, leftovers in a different, uh, in a different bin and throw, like, you know, or discard away the plastic packaging after washing it in, you know, a separate, uh, in a separate bin. Um, I know it takes like, I mean, a bit of uh, an effort, but that's just like, you know, two seconds of effort. Okay. Uh, and that will go a long, long way, trust me. Um, so yeah, so, you know, um, one, like you need to separate those and wash uh, and try and wash it and throw it away. Uh, now, once you've segregated the waste, then, you know, uh, in most cases, your municipality will uh, collect this waste. Now, the if you have segregated it properly, the plastic waste will then be sent to a recycling unit. Okay. Again, different types of plastics, one, have different recycling mechanisms. Um, so in a lot of countries now, they're actually asking, uh, you know, people to segregate waste by the type of plastic in their household. Um, and just, you know, for your reference, uh, like if you look up any product at your home today, uh, any plastic packaging that is there, shampoo bottle, now there's a, like, you know, a detergent pack package or something, just see they have a, a, a recycling site and they have a number inside it, okay? This number actually signifies the type of plastic it is. Okay, so uh, in the last cases, you'll see the number seven, which is MLP uh, in technical name, which is called multi-layer packaging, which means it has more, you know, uh, like more than two layers of different types of plastic or aluminium in them. This is the hardest to recycle and uh, it fetches the least value uh, for any recycler. Or let's say if there is number one, that means it's, uh, it's a PET, uh, PET bottle, um, which is super easy to recycle. Uh, an example could be your Coca-Cola bottle, you know, or your, mm -hmm. uh, you know, any water bottle that you see out there. Um, so as like the numbers increase, the difficulty of recycling of this plastic also increases. So also if there's a brand that, you know, uh, I mean, that has the plight of plastic, which is one, two or three, it, it'll be far easier to recycle that. That's just a bit of uh, like, you know, information for all of you out there. Uh, now, once, you know, uh, the recycler receives the plastic, there could be multiple ways that, you know, the plastic is recycled. One of the type of plastic recycling is mechanical recycling. Uh, in mechanical recycling, this plastic is turned back into plastic granules. Okay. Um, so, okay. So just to simplify this for you, when any plastic product is made, okay, out of virgin plastic, which is the fresh new plastic made out of petroleum, it comes into small granules, which is like small beads. Okay transparent beads in most cases uh, or it could be colored beads right um now again when the plastic is recycled by mechanical recycling it is turned back into these small beads and this can be reused to make the same product or a different product okay uh, this is mechanical recycling in chemical recycling this is broken down um, you know into chemical um or into mostly in uh, in a liquid form where it can be used either you know as a fuel or you know it can be used um in, to replace coal, uh, where, you know, uh, any factory or any sort of, a, a, like, a place can run, which, you, where, you know, they, this can be used for its calorific value. Uh, just that. I won't go into a lot of details uh, to overwhelm anyone. But the ideal case scenario is when this particular type of plastic, let's say a Coca-Cola bottle, once you had the drink, uh, and, you know, it goes back into recycling, so different components are separated, which is the cap goes separate, the, the ring around the cap goes separately, the bottle goes, uh, you know, again separately. And the worst part of it, the the, uh, the wrapper around it, where, you know, you have the branding, uh, that goes separately. The least, like, you know, uh, like, or the worst type of plastic among this is the wrapper, where you see the branding. Uh, so, but then all other types of plastics are recyclable, uh, and they're recycled, and um, so the PET plastic in most cases around the world today, uh, it's used to make polyester yarn. So 
So I'm sure all of you, uh, you know, or the listener and also you, Gabriela, would have heard brands like H&M and Zara launch their sustainable clothing lines, which they say are made out of plastic. It's nothing but it's your polyester clothes, which are made out of these bottles. And it has been, and I would call it it's somewhat greenwashing because this has been done for more than 50 years now. Polyester clothes in most cases are made out of these recycled bottles. Uh, so yeah, so it's it's that, but at least that's a use case. So you know, so yeah, so that's what that. So um, your other types of plastics, like you know, your the cap or the ring around it, that's um, HDPE, which is high density polystyrene. Uh, again, it's turned into like you know these small beads, which can then be used to make other products. It can also be used to make the caps, or it can be used to make a photo frame for you. It can be used to make a pencil stand or any plastic you know substance that you see out there. So, so yeah, so that's how uh, the look in on the plastic can be placed. Okay. And a couple of years ago, um, I think this happened in a lot of con- in a lot of countries where recycling just wasn't being accepted anymore. And it turns out that most of our recycling was actually just going to landfill. And I know recently, in the last couple of years, Australia in particular had this scheme where we brought our, um, what was it soft plastics? And it, um, to the supermarket to recycle, it turns out they were just putting them into a warehouse and they weren't actually doing anything with it. So, you know, even if I do everything right, you know, I um, put, I wash my containers, I put them in the recycling. How do I know that it's actually being recycled and that I'm actually doing the right thing? That's a great question. Um, so also one of the unfortunate realities that a lot of people don't know is that, yes, uh, they were putting it in warehouses. Also, a lot of uh, the country have been shipping their waste to less developed countries. For example, like, you know, uh, the US and I think uh, Australia also and, you know, the UK have been known to send their waste to India, China, Vietnam, um, Indonesia, like, you know, um, just so, and, you know, our country, like a country like India, where I am based, uh, we have landfills here. Um, so that that's also an unfortunate reality. I think one of the things that you can, as a customer, do to know is look for plastic neutrality certifications. Okay, uh, what plastic neutrality means is that the brand is taking responsibility of one calculating their footprint, uh, knowing how much plastic and what type of plastic they are putting out in the environment, and getting an equivalent amount and the same type of plastic recycled from the environment as well. That means that the brand really is putting in resources to make sure that you know. They know that, you know, okay, I have put, see, it's, it's, um, currently it's not possible, uh, or I don't think like for a very long time in future, it would be possible that if, uh, you buy a Coca-Cola bottle, Coca-Cola makes sure that, you know, they get the same bottle from you because simply because we don't know at what point, like, you know, uh, as a brand, they don't know at what point you finish the product, when you throw it away, um, or, you know, uh, like, let's say even for a detergent, they don't know like if you finish it in one month or two months or, you know, six months, right? So what the brands can do is that they know what type of plastic goes into their packaging and the same type and same amount of plastic they can get recovered from the market and have it recycled and get a certification for that from the government, which is audited. So, you know, so that's something that we, uh, that disposal company does for brands here in India. Um, and now there are similar services and again, uh, Vera, uh, you know, which does it on a global level, um, there are global certifications for the same. So I would highly recommend that, you know, you, um, if sin, because you are conscious about it, go and check that if your brand has a plastic neutrality certification. Okay. That's great. That makes me feel a lot better. And also I was wondering, you know, how do they know what packaging do I have to bring it to? A specific recycling point to you know make sure it is you know uh, plastic neutral. Um, it's good to know that they're just doing it um, in general. So even if I keep the product for years and I don't you know recycle it immediately, it's you know they're still doing their part. Yeah, I mean, and that's not practical, right? I mean, there could be a product that you could be using actually, like you know, for a year or you know for two. So um, so yeah, it's always like you know the right approach would be to actually. Uh, offset and equivalent amount and same. So we're going to move on to the practices and habits section now. Um, so what is something that you do in your own home to manage cleaning? Okay, so like I said, first of all, whenever like, you know, I'm going out there um, to shop, uh, like, you know, my first, like my first thing that I do is look for certifications. 
uh, you know, that's, um, so I make a list of, you know, all the things that I need, uh, like, you know, in terms of like, if I need a fruit thing or, or I need a detergent or I need like, you know, uh, like a, like a, uh, the soap for my uh, dishwasher and everything. Um, so yeah, I first, um, make a list of these things. Um, and then I also, uh, before I actually go to the market, I actually look for the eco-friendly alternatives. Um, I also have this habit of actually using uh, my Instagram to find if there are any uh, any of my friends or friends of friends uh, who started a small business. Uh, I think that's um, because I have come to find such great small businesses and it's really good feeling uh, to also help out, you know, uh, like, like somebody that I know uh, to buy from, you know, your friends or friends of friends. So, uh, and my first thing that I do is I think it takes, uh, and it, it does take me like a bit of time, uh, and you know, but I, I enjoy it because it's very personal to me. So I, uh, yeah, so I try and find either an eco-friendly alternative for the, the product that I want to buy. I see what's new in the market, uh, because there are all of these new certifications and you know, just better, more and more organic products coming out every day. And yeah, the, 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 just from my own circle, I often also post it on my personal Instagram that I'm looking for such a product that somebody knows. Um, I take those uh, suggestions from people. So while I've done that, um, I I also try not to buy a lot of things online uh, just because of the carbon footprint that it generates. Um, I still prefer going to a market, uh, a local market, uh, if possible, to buy all the products at one go. Um, it's a very small thing, but I would highly recommend this as a habit because, you know, um, one, you can also use it like uh, as a time to spend with your partner or your friend. You can go like, you know, shopping together. Uh, it's just a great activity. You get out, uh, you know, of your rat, of your households. A lot of us are, you know, working from home. So it's great to just go out once in a while, uh, you know, for this. And secondly, uh, with all the online deliveries, that just increases, you know, the carbon footprint up there. So that's one more habit um, that, you know, I have come to develop that I use my weekends for this. Um, so yeah, while once I'm there, um, then again, like, you know, because once you're in, at a supermarket, there are plethora of choices. Um, so one of the things, again, that I do is that I take my time uh, and, you know, I see that if the the brand that, you know, I'm liking or anything um, has the right kind of certifications on to it. Um, so yeah, uh, and you know, uh, like, I mean, at least in India here, we have a lot of people nowadays and they're trained actually to answer the questions that we have specifically around, uh, you know, how eco-friendly the lot of products are. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's also, you also have to balance out, like, let's say that if a product, like you said, um, it could come in, in a cardboard box, but inside, like, you know, it might have plastic packaging. So um, sometimes it's better to actually like, you know, ask people who know about this brand already who have this, this at the market to ask these questions. Um, so yeah, so I just ask a lot of questions um, and um, and yeah, like, you know, uh, these are just little habits that I have come to develop. Um, uh, and I think like I also keep uh, just mentioning this here and there in my family uh, so that more and more people can develop and we have to share with each other. Actually, that's a great tip as well. Um, you know, if you have learned something, you know, you really like this product, you know, it's really eco-friendly. Um, why not tell friends and family and save them the hassle ha of having to learn it themselves? Um, I know someone said to me, use this product because this is the best product. I'd be like, okay, sure. Yeah, it just takes up so much pressure off you, right? So mm -hmm. uh, I had this friend circle. In fact, um, so I, I, I am currently like living in Bombay uh, in India. A lot of people know it in Mumbai. Um, so we actually have a WhatsApp group where, you know, we just built a community. Um, and and honestly, like, it was all strangers, like, you know, when I like got connected with them on, on WhatsApp. But now, like, you know, we have these small eco meets uh, where all of us, like, you know, um, like get name or like a sample of a product that a new product that we found that we can use at our homes. And we swap those with each other. So, um, and I found a great circle, you know, for, with like-minded people in this. Oh, that's so fun. A little WhatsApp group where you meet up and like swap um, cleaning products. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, um, I know it's really hard to make friends and, you know, what a way to make friends. You also it's know a great that, way. You, you also know that, you know, these are the people you share the same value system with. So, you know, at, at the base, like it, it's very easy to have conversations with such people. Also share like, 
I mean, all like for example, you said that you know, I mean, the kind of overwhelming thoughts that you go with, you know, uh, that you have like about microplastics, about packaging, about greenwashing. So it's very comforting to know that you know people around you are feeling the same. Mm, yes, definitely, because I've I've you know had conversations with family where they're using lots of plastic, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you do that. Um, and so yeah, it must be nice to you know, meet with people who have the same values and also can give you tips and help you out there. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. I'm glad, yeah. And I hope you like build a swap southern uh, in one minute. So we're going to move on to the questions from the audience now. Um, so these are questions that we've gathered from our audience um, that we're going to ask you today. And if you, the audience, are interested in submitting some questions for future guests, um, check our Instagram page. Um, we usually post at the beginning of the week to gather some questions. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Um, but our two questions today, um, the first one is, how can individuals transition to eco-friendly cleaning practices without breaking the bank? Okay. So first of all, it's very important for you to know that, look, if this has to be a realistic lifestyle for you, it cannot be expensive. Okay. And sustainability does not have to be expensive. Um, so one, uh, like I have been saying throughout this podcast, uh, you know, the best thing would be find local brands because, you know, your local vendors can actually like, you know, uh, they can avoid all the overheads that come with marketing the brand at, uh, on a large scale that, you know, comes with uh, delivering the product to a long distance, um, also the packaging and everything. So if you actually, like, you know, focus on buying indigenous product in your own area, that can save so much cost for you. Um, it can be a lot more eco-friendly, uh, you know, in, in, in a lot of ways. And you can also know, like, you know, what really goes into the product that you're buying. Um, in most cases, you know, um, the small businesses are either making it in small batches or, you know, um, that a lot of them are also making it at their home. So you really know, like, you know, every ingredient that goes into it. Um, so so the best practice, again, would be buy local, buy indigenous, okay? Support your local businesses. Um, that's the best way. And, I mean, everyone benefits. Uh, it's a great proposition. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, there can be like, you know, uh, fortunately today everywhere, um, a lot of D2C brands are coming up, which are uh, not just sustainable, uh, but they're also, again, uh, more, you know, uh, they, they, they are more budget friendly as well. Uh, but they, but let me just uh, say it, like it, it, it's going to be a little difficult to find these brands. Um, because, um, because for these brands, one, uh, the scalability is a problem. Uh, and that's like, you know, that leads to a lot of overhead cost. Um, also, like, you know, um, like because these brands are new, they have to invest a lot of resources uh, to compete with, you know, your HUNs or the, again, the big conglomerates. So that just again leads to leads to some overhead cost that you as a customer might have to bear at the end of the day. So, so yeah, like, you know, I think that's the best way. And also, again, the digital solution. Um, so when you go for a refill, you are avoiding the the plastic packaging or any sort of packaging, uh, but you're also avoiding the cost that comes with that packaging. So, you know, it's it's much uh, cheaper for the brand and hence for you as a customer as well. Um, so, yeah, so just these two habits can, you know, really help you. Um, also, like, I mean, the best conscious consumer practices consume as less as possible. Okay, there is no alternative to consuming less. Um, so in like, you know, for example, I'm again going to draw from Gabriela's example, uh, like, you know, try that, uh, I mean, by the understand that, you know, it's great to have a, a, a dishwasher uh, because, you know, you need a lifestyle where, you know, you need that support. Uh, but try once in a while that, you know, you can wash the dishes, uh, you know, uh, yourself because one, you will save water as well. And also like, you know, uh, you will uh, just use less of the product. So, um, so, you know, maybe like, you know, try and find some pockets in your day when you can actually put in time in these household chores. Um, my, like, I think, best suggestion with that for that uh, also would be make it an entertainment habit. Uh, like, just switch on a podcast and do your core, like, you know, household chores. That's what I do. Uh, or, like, I, I, me and my partner have actually, like, you know, made this uh, a thing that we do together. So, you mm -hmm. know, not just that, you know, it becomes not just it becomes easier, but it also has brought us closer. So you can do that with your roommate, with your friends or with your partner. So, 
So yeah, so just these habits could really enrich your lifestyle. Um, I think I think you had another question. Would you mind if you do that? Yes. Thank you for those suggestions. And for our second question from the audience, um, they ask, "What are some common household items that can be repurposed for effective and budget-friendly cleaning solutions?" Okay, some household items. Uh, now, uh, like you know, in India, we know that you know, uh, like in some cases, vinegar really helps. Okay, uh, like a like a solution of uh, vinegar and lemon juice. Uh, you know. Is something that is helpful in cleaning. Uh, like you know, your especially your slabs that have, um, like that have a hard to remove stain. So, um, like you know, my my mother makes like a household solution. I can definitely get a recipe and share it with Gabriella to post it for all of you. Uh, like you know, so um, so see, we um, I I'll tell you this. Okay, so in India, uh, for like since times like ancient times. We have had this habit of making a lot of things at home, um, like you know, uh, that has just like that. That's part of our culture, and I think that's part of a lot of uh, South Asian cultures where you know people make stuff at home. So, um, and we often call them grandmama's recipes. Okay, uh, these range, uh, like you know, right from household cleaning products to uh, just simple medicines for cold and cough. Uh, like for example, we have this karha, uh, you know. Which is a amalgamation of spices, kind of like your hot toddy, but without the alcohol. Uh, and, you know, uh, we have all sorts of face masks that you know we make at home, uh, which could be like which one um, like has honey, uh, lemon juice, and also like you know leftovers from uh, your tomatoes and uh, potatoes, you know everything. So you know, um, like again, these are the things that you know you can find at your home. In fact, sometimes like, they're just leftovers, like I said. So, um, also t- turmeric, like you know, a lot of spices that you will find in your kitchen. Um, so, so maybe they cannot just like try and like just Google these household grandmama's recipe, uh, and you will find them. And if you have a like have a Asian friend, just reach out to them. They they will know, like you know, they will know these things. Um, another like you know, uh, uh, because it reminds me. So, if you are facing some issues with um. Pest or you know like ants at your home you know uh, you can actually just clean my area uh, like you know maybe just swipe it and clean it with water or something and then uh, put some turmeric there you know uh, and once you do that uh, like you know you will avoid like ants and all sort of pests uh, you know at your home so it's it's as simple as that you just have to like you know drizzle some turmeric in that right? uh, ah. yeah. So, uh, so yeah, one, reach out to your Asian friends, uh, like, I mean, not to patronize, but a lot of them have these secret grandmama's recipe, or maybe just Google it, and you will find a lot of household materials that, you know, you can use at home to clean or even, like, to put on your face for a glowy skin. Great. Thank you so much. I think I've got some expired turmeric, so um, maybe instead of cooking with it, um, I'll be that's sprinkling right. it out. Yes, that's the right use for it. Yes. Um, and thank you as well for offering to share that recipe. Um, what I will do is I'll pop it into the show notes. Um, so, you know, even now, if you're listening, you can find it in the show notes. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so that's all for our question from the audience. Not um, so There's so much fun. Thank you. Like, you know, also asking me these questions and I got yeah. to the that I use. So if our listeners want to find out more about you, um, where can they find you? Oh, so uh, anybody like, you know, who wants to reach out to me, I'm available on all social media platforms and I'm, I am responsive. Uh, my team also like, you know, looks into my messages so they can reply to uh, you. Um, I'm there on LinkedIn, I'm there on Instagram, I'm there on Twitter um, and Facebook, like, you know, if you're still using that. Uh, and the best way to reach out to me is via my email, uh, which I would request Gabriela to maybe like plug it in. It's bhagishri at the, the disposalcompany.com. Um, so yeah, I mean, feel free to reach out to me and I would love to answer any questions or queries that you have. Um, or if you want to be a part of like, you know, our WhatsApp group where we just share these tips and tricks, I'd be happy to help you there. Great. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll make sure we put those links in the show notes along with the recipe. Um, so everyone can, you know, join the WhatsApp group, send you an email, ask you a question. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much, Gabriela. I love being part of this conversation. Um, and, you know, you ask such insightful questions. So I'm very happy that we could have this on. 
Thank you so much for answering all of my personal questions about dishwashing tablets and microplastics. Anytime, anytime. You can always reach out to me for, you know, anything. anything. Thank you so much. You've been listening to On The House, produced by the Household Management Science Labs, a division of LMSL, the Life Management Science Labs. More episodes like this from across 10 life management perspectives can be found by searching LMSL on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, and other podcasting apps available on your smart devices. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider rating our show, sharing it, and subscribing to our channel as it helps other people find it so we can grow and bring you more quality resources. More of our work can be found on our website at hm.lmsl.net, where you can join our movement. I'm Gabriella Yastra. Thanks for tuning in.